Are you back? Uh, I'm facing the wrong way again. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sorry. Okay, I'm back. Okay, great. I'm just putting a little post on Facebook for some publicity for us to let everyone know to go to the MCCJ Instagram account. Those are some nice classes. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> my daughter measured my face. And uh, next thing I know, I went to my mailbox, and these were in my mailbox. Oh, that's so nice. <laughs> oh. All right. So, I'm just going to post this. There. And we'll just maybe, let's see, I'm not sure how many. We have a few people with us now, so maybe we should just give it a few more minutes to see if other people will join. Okay. Um, so what time is it now? Seven. Seven oh one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I just put a post on Facebook. Hopefully that will encourage people to hop onto Instagram. How was your day? Yeah, it was nice. Oh, uh, good. I did my, uh, I guess, good deed for today. Um, there were some people from Germany in my building, a uh, couple with their two, I guess, young adult uh, daughters. And they were trying to figure out how to go from the downtown by bus to Wynwood. Mm. So I told them oh. and then when I got off I was curious to see you know if they were at the bus stop so there they were and uh, anywho uh, they got wrong instructions from the, the bus driver of all people oh boy. It's not <laughs> so I got on the bus transportation in Miami I, I would know I don't have a car <laughs> okay so anyway I got on the bus with them and we went to Wynwood I showed them this uh mural of a, uh, it's called a Love Supreme. Mm -hmm. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? Um, I, it? I might have because I've been to one. With I think it, it, it's a, of two young black boys and one, uh, I don't know if he's Native American or if he's, you know, Latino. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I love about it is, number one, uh, you know, we're represented. The other part is that it's not in the gangster, you know, mm. you know, whatever, superficial, bad, you know, badass person, but but they're represented like as angels. Mm, yeah. And then you read into that, you know, the future of, of maturity, the future of, of you know, harmony and so mm. forth and so on. So then after that, I rode back, we got back on the bus and I got them back downtown and saw them off to take a bus uh, to Miami Beach, and they just got in town yesterday. Oh, that's so nice. Wow. Yeah, They're probably like, wow, the USA is not actually that bad. <laughs> <laughs> and, they're, and they're from Munich, so they said that everybody in Florida – uh, it's so friendly, Aww. and they said, and they said that the least friendly uh, people say that the least friendly city is where they live. <laughs> it's Munich. Oh, so, no. so I said to her, well, you know, sometimes people are certain ways because just custom it could be even could be weather. It could be a variety of reasons where people have a comfort zone. So you know, it's okay, you know, to be however you are, you know. Oh, that's such a nice that's such a nice story. I'm glad that you were able to help them out. I'm sure they're very they're very thankful. Um, okay, so I guess we should probably get started. So first of all, I just wanted to thank you so much for taking the time um, to to speak with me. Um, 
on behalf of this 10 Days of Connection um, initiative, um, and that's part of integrated into MCCJ's, well, MCCJ's in partnership with NAMI Miami and Repair the World and Dreaming Green. And so we've been running this social justice media campaign that we started um, on Monday, May 2nd, and we're focusing on three different topics. So uh, poverty slash economic insecurity, mental health, and then the last one is climate um, slash environmental justice. And so this is going to be part of the mental health topic. And um, so I, you know, we, to give everyone a little bit of context, I met Mr. Clark at an anti-racism and anti-Semitism event. You froze. Um, oh, sorry. Am I back? Hey, you're freezing. Oh, somebody on, on. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, but you were freezing. So go ahead, continue. I apologize. Oh, okay. I'll just. No, 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 that's okay. Let me know if it freezes again, because then no one's going to be able to hear what I'm saying anyway. So. Um, but, but instead of interrupting you, what I could do is if I raise my finger, that means you're frozen. Okay, sure. Thank you so much. So um, okay. we met at an anti racism and anti Semitism event um, a little, uh, a few weeks ago at the Hampton Art Lovers Gallery. If you haven't been to the Hampton Art Lovers Gallery, check it out. It's amazing. Um, and I really appreciated a comment that Mr. Clark made. So I, I went up to him after the event. And I was like, thank you so much for saying that. Um, I don't know. Do you, I'm sure you remember what you said, but would you want to repeat what you said or something? To, if you, so that the audience can have a little, oh, oh, shoot. Uh, okay. So I don't know what you may have done differently, but if whatever you, yeah, so I don't know why you're freezing, but anywho, you asked me to say something about what I said there, or I didn't follow you. Oh, sorry, yes. So I was just going to say, if you remember, you know, when I came up to you after the event, and I was like, thank you so much for saying what you said. Um, at the end, when they asked audience members to come up and, and comment on, you know, the the, the evening, um, you you said something that really resonated with me. So I don't know if you remember what that was, but okay. Yeah, I basically talked about the idea of seven unifying functions of a family and that um, sometimes you have more in common with your best friends. You may have more deeper connection, more intellectual, uh, stimulating ideas than you may have with your relatives. But the, the idea, whatever you you have, and, and just go with what works. Uh, so some of those things were, you know, playing together. I'm going to rattle them off. I, I don't want to take up time discussing. But playing together, uh, working together, um, child rearing together, loving together, loving together meaning encouragement, um, mm. um, learning together, which could be formal or informal. Um, so yeah, I, I lost my yeah, time. And I, oh, yeah, worshiping and I, together. I, I, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, and, and, and I really appreciated when you said, you know, so often we only gather at funerals, like when we when we see the people we love, when you know when we want to make connections with people, like these days, it's like we only see our families all together at funerals. And you were like, why can't we have more occasions, you know, to come together in in times of joy? So I think that that's a really important thing to to hang on to. Um, all right, so that was just to give everybody a little bit of context um, for how this how this connection was made. Um, so basically, um, we're just going to go through some questions that I, um, I'm going to ask you about mental health and, um, you know, some possible strategies, including spirituality and music and artistic expression, um, for how we can help, um, combat mental health struggles. So I'll just go, I'll, I'll just start with the first question. 
So, um, so if you can actually, if you can just tell us um, a little bit about yourself, um, first of all, and a few words on um, why you think mental health is important. Um, I'm uh, Keith Clark, uh, born and reared here in Miami. And um, I traveled, um, you know, I ventured out uh, when I was probably just in, in my teens. Uh, went to California, came back. Uh, one time I went to Oakland High School for the 11th grade. Then I came back to Miami and graduated from Jackson. And then I went on to Miami Day College and eventually traveled some more. <laughs> Done some interesting things. I traveled one time with the Ringling Brothers Circus around this country in Canada. Um, another world with more problems than, uh, than our world. Um, graduated from California State University in uh, Carson, California near Compton. And primarily my background was social service for about 15 years, then I kind of burned out and um, went to go manage a movie theater. It wasn't what I thought it would be, so I always had a part-time job. So I went to a, a security company and asked them to send me to their best account. And um, it turned out to be a very good uh, move. Uh, because I found I had a lot of energy after work, and then I be got became involved in community uh, building and, and you know, wow, that's, creative that's artistic so events. So go ahead. Okay. Um, so, yeah, so why for you, um, why do you think, you know, why would you say mental health is, is important and why do you think mental health is, is thought of as a stigma in certain spaces? And I think I'm even just going to draw from something that you just said. And you said, you know, I felt like I had much more time and energy after work when I made this career shift, when you made this job shift, which I feel like we so often don't think about. We're so focused on the job that we don't think about, but what about my life outside of the job? You know, am I a person outside of the job? Do I have energy outside of the job? So I think that's really important that you mention that. Um, so, yeah, if you can just let us know why you think mental health is important and then why um, it, it, may, it may still be a stigma in certain places. So I think it's very important to know what brings you happiness. And I don't mean uh, superficial happiness, but deep down inside you delight about something. So it's speaking to you, it's telling you, this is what brings you joy. This is what you need to repeat. Um, and so then you have to build a life that allows you to have joy, wellness, maturity, and, uh, and wisdom. And so therefore you have to kind of make a shift because you can probably have a hundred things, but you'll probably be miserable having a hundred things. So you may have to break it down and just choose whatever, five things at a time that you, uh, you know, that you enjoy and, and that really resonate with you mm. and, and, and that you are ready for. Mm. Sometimes when you're not ready for something and you force it on yourself, uh, it could work temporarily, but then, you know, your body may break down mm. or you may lose interest. Um, so, so I would say mental health is very important, but a lot of it has to do with being true to your happy self. Mm -hmm. So if you, if you don't know who you are, then mm -hmm. you'll just, you know, experiment, um, uh, you know, with other things or other people. But when you get enough insight to realize that, nah, that's not me. And you know, to leave it alone. And let's say you have 20 interests, but, you know, you have to figure out which ones are the most important. Mm -hmm. And then you have to kind of do things incrementally. Mm -hmm. You just have to say, okay, here are the 20 things I like, but I'm in need of money now. So let me find, mm -hmm. you know, a way to take care of that need in, in a way that's still enjoyable as opposed to taking on a job, you know, that I hate or that, you know, goes through the 
against the grain of my my well being. Mm. Um, so I, yeah, so mental wellness, I guess is what I'm calling it, is very important. And the stigma of mental illness, yeah, I guess people just see it as there's something wrong with that person, or that's too embarrassing. Let's be hush about it. Mm. Uh, but I think you have to at least have uh, self-honesty and sometimes mm. authenticity and credibility, at least with yourself. And sometimes you, you know, friendship can be a form of therapy. So you may have to find somebody who's really good for you to say, I'm struggling in this area, or I'm thinking this. Let me run it by you. Mm. What do you think? And then you, you get their feedback. Now, if what somebody is telling you, you know within your being that it's not right for you, you can still listen to them. Mm -hmm. Then finally, you have to make the assessment and say, okay, I'm going to take a part of of the insights they share with me, but I got to add, you know, my, you know, my flavor to it. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, like... Luther Vandross, you know, the great singer, did a song that was called Here and Now. Um, And I'm sure this song probably doesn't even register on certain young people, but it was quite a quite a beautiful song. But Luther, when he won an award for the song, he said, now, when I first got this song from Skip, which was Skip was uh, John Warwick's son, he said it didn't sound, you know, the way it sounds now, I had to Lutherize it. <laughs> so, so I think, you know, whoever you are, you you know, whether you're Paul or Keith or, you know, Hannah, you know, you've got to Hannahize it. Mm. In other words, you got to put yourself into it where your soul and your, your uh, autonomy and your empowerment, your strength, your tenderness, your realness, mm. you know, it's a part of something so that it's, mm-hmm. you know, it's part of who you are and therefore it's not really going to break you, it's, it's probably going to maybe develop more capacity, you know, whether it's capacity to think, capacity to um, to love, capacity to, you know, to give more. Mm. But um, I think it's very important to be truthful to yourself mm. and, and, to, and to not follow, you know, other people's uh, direction or path, and also not to let People intimidate you or, you know, force you to do things their way. Mm -hmm. If you realize somebody is a control freak and if you're in a situation you have to deal with it, okay, fine. But Mm -hmm. be clear when that person is not around you that you really don't want to continue in this kind of dynamic. Mm -hmm. And then gradually you'll have to find a way to leave uh, bad news alone and, 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 you know, go out on your own in a space where you can be your happy self. Hmm. Yeah. So I feel like I'm hearing a lot of, um, you know, in order to promote, well, you know, self well being, it's a lot of reflection on who we are, what we enjoy. Um, ooh, am I freezing a little bit? Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, but a lot of a lot of self reflection and and trying to you know take the time to be with ourselves so that we are feeling like we're comfortable in different spaces. Um, so you 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 already started answering this question a little bit. So um, the next question is how do we change this narrative around um, a negative stigma um, with mental health? So. I think that some of the, some of what you were already saying is, you know, having the ability to, to lean on your moral compass and know what feels good and what doesn't feel good. Um, so I guess having the courage, you know, I, I mean, that's part of changing the narrative is, is, you know, letting people know that they have to have the courage to, to stand, um, to stand by what they believe in. Um, and what's important to them. But I don't know if you want to expand upon this idea of how do we change the narrative around 
um, a negative uh, idea of, of mental of mental health. This negative stigma. So, um, yeah. Well, I think w one of the things is to uh, is to find you know the resolve and to find the wellness. Uh, when you said courage, I read uh, a couple books related to courage. One that I really like was called The Courage to Create by Rollo May. Mm. And he talked about five courages, uh, five types of courage. Uh, from my recall, because I think I read it 30 years ago, uh, there's physical courage, there's political courage. I think he said uh, social courage. Uh, and I think he said religious courage, but the fifth one is creative courage. And he felt it was the bravest because it had no, it had nothing to fall back on. You kind of just had to, you know, put it together as you go through the process. And he said that when you create, there's an intense encounter, which can either be caused by elation mm -hmm. or rage. Mm. But when you uh, have this encounter, you are so focused on this thing that you're trying to unravel or you're trying to create that you'd like basically uh, you, you're, you're tuning out everything else because you're engaged in this. And um, his idea is that, well, here are two other books that, that I read probably sometime after that book. And one was called... Um, but there's a relevance I'll, I'll tie it in later one is called um, um, On Caring and that's what's written by a guy named Milton Mayeroff and the whole premise of that book is that you, we find our place in this world not through dominating or explaining or controlling but through caring and being cared for in return mm. so when you care for something and it doesn't have to be necessarily a person it could be an idea it could be a an animal, it could be a thing. But when you care for something, you help it to grow in light of its own nature. Mm. So for example, if I find that I have a dog that delights in a certain thing that I do, then I realize, hey, you know, he he or she really likes this. So let me, you know, give them more of this or or do this. So when you care about something, you help it grow in light of its own being, not in light of how you want it to grow. Mm. Also, when you care about something, you are actualizing yourself because you're not focusing on you. You're just focusing on giving and 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 and, and serving the well-being of something else. Mm. When you care, you also find a center of your own good. And there were two more things that I don't recall about caring. But the idea of this book is that, you know, find what you care about. You know, and if you don't care about it, you know, if you don't care about it, don't beat yourself up. Don't make yourself care about something mm. you don't care about. But when you find a thing that you care about, then, then you know, give time to it. And then the very last book was a book uh, called, um, in fact, um, this book was called uh, um, Skills for Success by a lady named Adele Shilley. And um, she was... I don't recall what the six uh, skills were, but the idea of the book is that um, you have to you have to basically introduce yourself to people, tell them what who you know who it is and what you're about, you know, be transparent, and then um, you could also receive them and let them tell you. Uh, but then you can also through that consultational exchange, maybe you may discover ways that they can give you some advice or or you know, uh, give you some connections mm -hmm. to other people that may be beneficial mm -hmm. to you. One one thing that they emphasize, at least from my recall, was that you can do information interviews. You can interview people who are doing things that you think appeal to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's a there's a uh, information interview uh, questionnaire that you can use to go interview somebody but you get insights and have an exchange but the idea is that you have to have the courage to at least be who you are mm. and if you don't know who you are that's cool too mm. just discover in time just be open to where you feel happy 
and then that's a good indication of that's who you are. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. And if um, you know, if you stay true to to who you happily are, I, I think your your well being uh, will increase, and your mental illness will, will decrease. I think one problem with mental illness is people who are have a lot of stress put on them, maybe by you know controlling loved ones, mm. or maybe by you know, just a demand of a job that they no longer, you know, want to to deal with. But they they stay in it anyway until, you know, until they start falling apart. Mm-hmm. Mm. I like I like to ask you some questions. Oh, really? <laughs> I hadn't gotten through all my questions yet, but I suppose we okay, don't have to. So I, we don't have to keep well, the format. You know, we don't have. To no, no, no. I don't mind your format. So, but what are your thoughts? You have any further thoughts on on? Yeah. You know, the, the stigma of mental illness, as well as, um, I guess the the joy or, or the grace or the or the salvation of of mental wellness. Yeah, I mean, I just wanted to, I can pick up on some of the stuff that you mentioned. So, you know, thinking of, of mental health not as an aside, but something that's sort of, you know, it's integrated into our lives. And it's more about if we think of mental health and mental well-being as, as a shared thing between ourselves and friends and family and this idea of self-care and then caring for others like you were talking about. So, you know, I think that's a really great way to think about mental well-being is this idea of caring. So um, uh, shared caring, like caring for oneself, caring for others, because I think that makes it seem maybe less intimidating because I think it's also the language. You know, sometimes people are a little bit, they shy away from the words mental health. And if you if you rephrase it, reframe it as, you know, caring, self-care, um, you know, some people might be more willing to participate or feel less anxiety around this idea. Um, and I think that, I don't know, I think that, you know, a lot of people may feel like it's a weakness. Um, you know, like you were talking about the stresses of, you know, whether it be a job or like relationships. And so we always want to, we don't want to show others that we're not up to the task, that we don't have enough capacity to do whatever it is that we're doing, that, you know, we want to make sure that we're on top of our game. Like, if I, you know, I want to, I want to do my job well, so I'm stressing about it because I want to make sure that I'm the best I can be, and I want to make sure I'm the best, you know, friend I can be, the best mother I can be, and so I think it's difficult to talk about things, you know, like, because people might associate talking about mental well-being with weakness when really you know when you're able to share those struggles with other people and when you're let me grab my charger my phone is about to die um but um you know when you're able to to communicate with other people and be honest with yourself about what you're going through and be honest with others about what they're, you know, what you're going through. Um, it becomes less scary and more of a shared, a shared activity. So those are my thoughts for this minute. And I will let you continue on with the next question oh. while I run and grab my charger, which is very close by. Um, well, while you're grabbing your charger, I want to make a comment. Sure. Great. I know that James Baldwin, um, makes a comment that even in battle you have to find rest so uh, if you don't get rest to recharge and to relax you know and to heal then you really won't have the strength to continue you know with the struggle or the effort or the endeavors uh, so so rest is very important and um as opposed to pushing, uh, even athletes have to rest. Yes, yes, so important. So important, and I feel like, you know, with COVID, we were all like, okay, now we understand the importance of rest, and I kind of feel like that's already out the window again, and I'm like, it hasn't even been that long, you know? (laughs) (sighs) Um, all right. So I would say balance, balance goes with rest yes. and, and perhaps even moderation mm. 
you know, so that you don't go to extremes where you, uh, you know, you cause problems, you know, for yourself. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. So um, let's see here. I wanted to know if you could talk a little bit about how spirituality can be used as, a, as an effective tool for working through mental health struggles. Or promoting well, mental well-being, as you stated earlier, if we wanted to make it. Yeah, I, I, I think having a, a connection with a superior being, you know, if you, you know, believe in, you know, creator or, or God or whatever it may be called for you, um, is very, you know, important to probably most people. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think even people who are agnostic still have this kind of connection and a communication or communion with the higher being. So um, I know that at different ages in people's lives, um, they have, you know, s- several needs. I know when I was a, um, I think I was graduated from 10th grade and I was hitchhiking. I had a saxophone with me and back then uh, it was safe. It was safe to uh, hitchhike. Right. Uh, <laughs> this this was before Lyft or Uber was ever thought of. Uh, but anywho, uh, so this guy picks me up and you know he says, "What do you have there?" And I said, "A uh, saxophone." And I'm just beaming from ear to ear. So he goes, "What are you going to do with that?" I said, "Oh, I'm going to be a music teacher or or jazz musician." And so he says. Boy, don't you know jazz is the work of the devil? And my heart like stopped. Oh, no. Literally, I was naive. I couldn't believe what this guy was. I said, why do you say that? Mm. He says, don't you read your Bible? And I grew up Catholic. And at the time that I grew up Catholic, you know, we had a, I guess you could say catechism. We didn't really read the Bible. Mm. So he says, I'm going home. Why don't you come and meet my family and come go to church with us? So I go to this guy house, house, and the wife was excellent cook and very, you know, close knitted family. Uh, so I go to this church, and you know, it was a holy roller church. So that was quite a shock to the system for me. Um, oh boy! So, I, but so I was like, you know, with my eyes closed and looking out of the corner of my eyes at, at them carrying on over there. So I made this pact with God. I said, look. I don't know what you want from me, but if you want me to behave like this, I'll do it, but not here in Miami. I will not embarrass myself. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll, I'll go wherever you want me to go, God, but I will not be, become a holy roller here. Mm. And so out of the blue came a letter from my oldest, oldest brother who was a lifer in the military. And it said, if anybody wants to come visit him in California or live there, uh, contact him, and that was it. Uh, I wrote him, and next thing you know, I'm on a Greyhound bus for three days to go to California. So my heart was open to, you know, to 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 find something. You know, mm-hmm. everybody has a time in their life. Mm-hmm. So for me, you know, my you know my answers came in time mm-hmm. while I was there. So then I came back to Miami, finished the second half of the eleventh grade because I was on my path. And, uh, mm. you know, and I would say probably maybe eight more months, you know, I was, I knew that I knew that I knew, you know, what, what my, what was right for me. And I didn't have to become a holy ruler, mm. but, but I did, I, but I did have to become a world citizen. Mm. So, you know, it depends on a, a person's upbringing and influences. Right. In my heart of heart, I've always believed that people were equal. I always knew that women were brighter than men. Um, but for the sake of not having an argument, you know, we'll just say that we're equal. And I always knew that we could have heaven on earth, you know, mm-hmm. uh, but we just had to find a way to do it. So, you know, I searched and, and for me personally, you know, I found the, uh, the Baha'i faith, but, you know, it's no clergy. So it was strictly reading, challenging, trying to prove wrong, but then realizing that, okay, uh, for me, this is right. So everybody has to find their own, you know, their own answer. Mm-hmm. And you can't just stay with something out of tradition. Mm-hmm. 
when you can't stay with something out of pity, <laughs> uh, you can't stay with something just because you promise you'll stay with it. You have to be true to yourself. And when you, when, you know, uh, when you're a child, you 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 know you're ready for childish things. But when you become an adult, you know you want something of more substance. So mm -hmm. each person along their path has to find what brings them, uh, I guess, satisfaction. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Yeah, I mean, I think that what you said about having an open heart. You know, I, I think that's so important and I think that's a great strategy, you know, for mental well being is is opening up your heart and sort of trusting the process and trusting your your path, you know, not somebody else's path, but trusting your path. Um and, and trusting that, you know, things things are gonna work out if you're if you're um you know, if you're being true to yourself, as you said. Um, because I think that, you know, what you're getting at is when you aren't true to yourself, that's when you start to go down a path where you you may may lead to you may lead you to unhappiness um and and struggle so thank you so much for that this i love all these little you know tidbits of all these these stories these life experiences so great um so i this is kind of you know a similar question so how how can you how can we use um music and artistic expression um for for helping us to promote mental well-being um, you know, sometimes you need a song, right? Or a song just comes into you, you hear it, and it's like speaking to you, just like yes. you can find a book. Sometimes that you need really, a song. I love this. Yes, you, you know, that really address what's going on. I mean, nobody else is connecting, mm -hmm. but this song is, 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 is my story mm -hmm. or, or, or is speaking the truth for me. So mm -hmm. uh, I think also... You know, it doesn't hurt to expand your musical range and taste. So sometimes you could um, either, this day and age, you know, go on um, YouTube and just thumb through things or, or whatever things where you can stream songs and check out different things or even ask other people, hey, what are some of your favorite songs? I, I just want to learn more. Because to me, it's also like... A, like food, you know, I can eat the same things over and over, but I want to try something different. So I may ask other people, what are some of the things you really like and what places do you like them from? Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I go check those things out and I'm like, you know, expanding my um, my pace, my repertoire, mm -hmm. my, my, my experience. Uh, but I would say, <laughs> depends on the person. I, I knew a guy in the building that I work in who never listened to music. He doesn't like mm. music. He doesn't like listening to it. Wow. So I have no idea how he, uh, you know, gets clarity, mm. how, he, how he, you know, gets relaxation, but he, he must have some way. You know, a person could, could get it by fishing. A person could get it by just um, sitting down, you know, in the park and experiencing nature. So, you know, everybody has a different, my daughter, loves rain i mean like you know like loves it and speaking of her she was living in germany for like i guess like three and a half years and a couple months ago she moved to lagos wow. but you know she's a independent soul and she, and she does she listens to her calling mm. and she's true to herself mm. you know and when i see some of her uh instagram postings and so forth I realize that she's very, very happy mm. and she's thriving doing her thing. That's so nice to hear. Wow. A real life example of what it, you know, means to be, well, two real life examples. You have you and, <laughs> and your daughter when you follow, you know, what, what feels true to yourself. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, but would you want to talk a little bit more about, for example, like what kind of, you know how you got into the jazz scene and you know how that's helped you feel fulfilled and and bring joy into your life yeah so um i lived in atlanta for um 12 years from 86 to 98 so um I still haven't been to atlanta i've been told it's one of the best cities and i need to go so gotta get there so 
When I was there, I ran into a guy named Phil Morrison, a bass player that played with Freddie Cobain. Uh, and he's also a songwriter who wrote a tribute song to Nat King Cole, uh, about Nat King Cole that was televised. Anyway, Phil and I met, I knew him from Boston, but we met in Atlanta. And he asked me, was I looking for a roommate? And I said, uh, why do, do you ask? He says, well, I, know, I have a buddy named Keith uh, Williams that wants to move here. So I called this guy up and I asked him um, over the phone, what are your three favorite films? And he said, The King of Hearts, Harold and Maud, and A Thousand Clowns with Jason Robart. So I said, okay, we can be roommates. Uh, there are certain nuances um, and epiphanies and insights. Um, and plus, these songs have, you know, rich music. Uh, for example, the Harold and Maud, the whole Cat Stevens does the soundtrack. And, you know, some of Cat Stevens' songs, such as, you know, Morning Has Broken, or if you want to be, uh, uh, I can't remember the title of it. But anyway, he has a lot of songs about empowerment and, mm. and, and you know, finding your, your, you know, your true self. Mm. So, uh, anyway, to answer the question about, so I've always loved jazz. But anyway, when the guy moved to uh, Atlanta, to this Keith Williams, I was, we were renting a small apartment, but we found a house to rent that had a large backyard and back deck. Mm -hmm. So we invited 150 people to the housewarming party and 300 people showed up. Oh my gosh. But what was interesting, we had Japanese cultural players, Mexican band, uh, mariachi band, jazz band, folk, blues. So this we is also like had the party of the century thing. over here. I know. So, so that was like June of 92. So people called us up in August, uh, no, in July and said, when are you having another Keith and Keith Yard party? Oh, my God. So it took on a life of its own. So we did four the next year. And anyway, um, when I moved back to Miami, when I moved to Miami in 98, I continued to do yard parties once a year in Atlanta up until 2005, and then I said, this is crazy, I don't live here, I have to stop this. So then I introduced jazz to the building that I work in. Mm. I said, I'd like to have a jazz uh, series here. Mm. And so uh, it's that famous tower near down, right, near the, right. the, the Miami Tower building. Yeah. So we ran a jazz series there from 2005 up until August 2013. Wow. And then uh, they renovated the space I was using. So I went to the Olympia Theater, and I said, I like to use your lobby as a jazz lounge. And once again, you know, you don't have to start off perfect. You just have to be in tune with an idea and then take some action. So I said to this guy, Robert Geidner, uh, I'll split the cost with you on the musicians and let's try three. So in three days he contacted me and he said, no, we're gonna, we're gonna do 14 months and we're gonna pay for everything. And I've been working with him, and it's still continuing. So from October 2013 to the present, we still run jazz series. Now it's outside of three stages. But what I'm getting at, look how a person can fail towards their own success. Mm. Here I am, look how I can arrive. <laughs> a guy, you know, scares the bejeebies out of me, telling me that I'm going to burn in hell for liking jazz. Uh, me being, you know, open and vulnerable, mm. And searching, finding, you know, a religion that is modern for me and, and, and has a world perspective. Um, and then me finding ways to get back into my jazz, even though I'm not playing it, you know, I have a certain tastes and standards. So when I find bands or ensembles that knock my socks off, then I try to put them in my uh, series. And so I've been doing jazz downtown since 2005. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm still enjoying it. If I didn't like it, I wouldn't be doing it. Mm. I love that. I love that. Just really following your heart. Because, yeah. that, you know, that's that being like the guiding compass and not, you know, worrying about how will it work out, but, but trusting that, you know, it feels good. So I should keep pursuing this. And then, you know, meeting people who are like minded. Um, yeah, I think that's such a beautiful story. 
Yeah, you have to have, well, for me, I have to have people who can deliver the goods. I mean, they have the talent, you know, to get the, the, the excellent art. Mm. But also I have to work with people who obviously have credibility and are reliable. I mean, if I'm working with somebody who says they're going to do something, but they don't do mm. it, and then, it, you know, it makes me look bad that I can't deliver, you know, the talent that I said I could. So, so far, you know, knocking on wood, I, I've been very fortunate. I've never had anybody, uh, you know, throw me under the bus or, or you know, can't or not show up for the gigs. So, and I've and all the people I've ever hired, you know, maybe couple one one ensemble. Uh, really deliver the good. So mm -hmm. I'm very, very fortunate. Well, I mean, maybe that speaks to, you know, the the fact that you are very, you're a very open person and that you, t you talked about vulnerability, for example. I'm a big believer that, you know, when we are vulnerable, it invites other people to be vulnerable as well. Um, and it kind of, you know, it's like the opposite of putting up borders and fighting fire, fire with fire. You know, you're able to just sort of mm -hmm. be like, okay, I'm here. I'm not going to, you know, put any barriers between us. I'm willing to, to be open. I'm willing to have this communication, which, you know, helps people, helps us to trust each other more. Um, because if we're, you know, if we're being open and honest, um, that, you know, it, it's easier to be, to be vulnerable and to trust people and, and to trust that things are going to work out. So, yeah. Um, so I'm just wondering if you wanted to talk a little bit about some other techniques that you've personally used um, uh, to help promote your well-being. I mean, you've kind of mentioned some of these things along the way, like, so this, I don't, I hope it's not too repetitive, but if you want to just really, you know, if you wanted to highlight some things that you already mentioned or, you know, any last, you know, I would, I don't know if we'll have any questions, but I want to leave a little bit of time just in case, but any, anything else you want to say about what you do to promote your, um, you know, mental well-being, um, or anything else you wanted to highlight? Well, for me, <laughs> I have to have a date book. So I have to, you know, when I agree to do something, I have to put it on the calendar. I can't just keep it in my head. Because mm -hmm. then if I forget and, and, I'm, and I prove to be unreliable, then that's not good. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, um, you know, you have to have some kind of organization. You can't have something in a date book and then lose it every time, you, you know, you put something down. So you have to have a certain kind of uh, order. Uh, you also have to have uh, not so much balance, but it has to work. You can't, you know, plan two things at the very same time. Unless it's a, a situation where you can go to, you want to go to three different concerts. So if you want, if you know you're going to be at one for whatever, 45 minutes, but you're going to go across the street to another one for 45 minutes, and then you're going to leave that and go to the, the one you want to stay at, you know, that's, that's fine. But, you know, but if it's a matter of, uh, like, if I'm putting on my series, you know, I can't, I can't go, uh, whatever, watch a, you know, a concert just as a patron when I'm when I have a responsibility to be there to facilitate mm -hmm. and to curate, you know, the production that's going on that I'm responsible for. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you write it down and if you find that the stuff you have on your calendar, you know, you know, brings you joy, then then you're on the right path, you know, and you mm -hmm. don't need to do everything that's all so at interesting. once. That's so interesting. But, but if you find that I got all this stuff going on and, you know, I don't like it. Mm. Then you gotta know how to say no. Yep. Uh, and some, and sometimes you have to probably do something you don't want to do to realize that that's not what you want to do anymore. Mm. But if you uh, you know if you shut down your your true feelings about something, um, then you might make yourself numb. You know, which means you can't feel. You know stuff that really is rewarding. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say be honest with yourself and just, to, oh, I know um, there was this book called Now Know Your Strengths. Mm. And it, and the, the whole premise of the book is that when you find something you can do happily, successfully, and repeatedly, that's your skill 
your talent, your calling. And successful doesn't mean money. It just means you have the ability to do it mm. over and over. So then what you do is you add skills and you add knowledge to your calling, and then it becomes your strength. Mm. And so you build your whole life around your strengths and the heck with your weaknesses unless they sabotage your strengths. If they sabotage your strengths, then you do something to minimize that uh, weakness, but you don't give it power. Mm. So the idea is that you build your life around your strengths, and that strength includes your happiness, because mm -hmm. it's based on you know what I just mentioned earlier, and it's also based on you sharpening your your skills and sharpening your your, your knowledge. Mm. So uh, I think that book is is either called Now Know Your Strengths, or oh, I think it's called Now Discover Your Strengths or Discover Your Strengths Now. Um, but uh, th that book was very important. The one example they gave was a, a lady went to medical school and then she discovered that she hates the sight of blood. <laughs> but then she, then she started talking that, ah, but if I went into dermatology, it would just be on a surface level. It wouldn't be, you know, uh, like an emergency room blood type of thing. So, so she went into dermatology and it worked. So, also, this same book has like a guided uh, questionnaire. Uh, you, I think it's like a hundred questions. They give you like a code, oh, and, wow. and only you can use it. And then when you take the test, it gives it breaks down your strengths and your whatever. Uh, proclivity or your, your your abilities in certain areas. So you may be more on the creative side, more on the mechanical side, more on the, uh, uh, you know, right, right, whatever. So, but the point is, you just get a better idea. So sometimes we, a person has to uh, discover who they are. You don't you don't just say you don't just dictate this is who I am. Mm. Oh, that may be true, but you may discover Let you have be who you want it, who you are. Yeah, but but you may also, as you get older or just change, you may change and, and, and develop another side. So mm. that's why some people have several careers or, or you, because they, you know, they go from being just a musician to then become a, you know, a painter and then become, you know, maybe even a comedian mm -hmm. or, or, or a president like, like the guy in, in Ukraine, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's so interesting, you know, what you said. I feel like we so often forget about the more simple things like don't overbook your calendar. You know, when you overbook yourself, you're going to be stressed. You're, it's going to have a negative impact on your well-being. And I think that that's something that, you know, we're always trying to, especially in a capitalistic, you know, society, um, like this idea of meritocracy and like your your worth and your value is tied into how quickly and how much you can produce. Um, I think that it's 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 hard for us to to be like okay no I actually need to space out my meetings or or like you said okay I I've made a commitment here so I don't want to overcommit here and that's that's not only promoting you know well being for yourself but well being for others because other people you know they don't want to have the Hannah who's gone through five meetings and now this is the sixth meeting and I'm grumpy and that's not their fault. That's my fault. You know? So like making sure mm -hmm. that I'm avail when I'm available, that I'm really available, not only for myself, but for others. And I think even just like this visual idea that you gave about if what you see on your calendar is not, you're not liking that, then that's a sign that, you know, you need to redirect. And I think that that's, you know, such an interesting visual exercise that, you know, we can all do to sort of have a little bit of a checkpoint with ourselves, you know, um, a check-in with ourselves and say, okay, am I on the right path? Am, am, is what I'm doing bringing me joy? How do I feel about all of these things that I'm currently involved in? Um, and, yeah, I think that it's, it's, it's such good advice, you know, to – to do all of this self-exploration and to really allow yourself to be open to changing. And, you know, like if you, if you decide that you, like you said, if you decide you want to do something different later on in life. And I've also found that what you said about, you know, you have to, sometimes you have to do stuff that you don't like to understand what you do like. 
that's been very mm -hmm. true for me this year. So I appreciate you saying that. Um, so yeah, I, I really, lots of, lots of really great. And I, and I found the book, I think I Googled it. Um, it, I think it is now discover your strength, as you said, now discover your strength. And it's, is it by, um, Donald O. Clifton and Marcus Buckingham? By any chance? Yeah, that's the book. All right. So for every anyone listening, sounds like a really great book, especially with the the activities. It's kind of you know interactive. That sounds like a good. And it also is on uh, audio book too. Oh, okay. Oh, that's great. Great for all the people driving in that Miami traffic, or like me on the train. <laughs> You're on the train, and avoiding the traffic. Um. So I don't know. We I think we have a few people still listening in. I don't know if anyone has any questions. If you want to just pop the questions into the chat or comments. We did get some comments earlier. I'm going to flip my camera for a minute. To... Got a beautiful comment about water and sleep um, being very necessary for restoration and that love is necessary um, um, to grow. It's, it's no different than plant growth. Um, the soil is our environment, the water our nourishment. What a beautiful comment. Um, and then this idea of sunshine um, in terms of, you know, just like finding joy even when you walk outside and, and being able to like be present in the environment. I think that that's what that comment says to me is, I think that that's really helped me lately is like, you know, the other day I walked out of my apartment instead of immediately putting in my headphones to listen to music or whatever, I was like, you know what, why don't I just chill out and not listen to anything on the way to work? Because I'm always trying to maximize my time. I'm like, well, I should be listening to a podcast because I could be learning a million things or I should be doing this. And it's like, what if I just walked to the train, rode on the train and that's all I did? You know, and it really helped me kind of just feel very relaxed. You know, I feel like sometimes when I get to work, I'm already all worked up. And I, I felt like that was like a better way for me to transition into my day. So, um, yes, we got. Oh, thank you so much for your comment. Um, so there was very interesting conversation. So we're glad that you tuned in. Um, yeah. Any last comments? So do you have what one minute left or what is it? Well, you I mean you can take your time. There's no real, you know, we'll cut it off when we, well, when we want. I think to piggyback on what someone said about the, no, on what you just said about the importance of uh, not listening to music, too. So I think, you know, I think earlier I said that James Baldwin said, in battle, you have to find rest mm. or, or you can't continue. So mm -hmm. sometimes you need to uh, mix it up or or have silence. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and I know that some music I can't listen to. I mean, I like it at certain times in my life, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, if it's just too much energy yeah. and I need to think, you know, I don't want a distraction, then I'll either just have the music off or I have something, you know, very relaxing. Mm -hmm. Now, when I go to bed and I don't know if, you know, I need therapy for this or not, but you know, I, I put on, I put on a uh, music of like uh, like the ocean. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. But for me, you know, I'm like instantly out when I throw it on. Um, but you know, I I, so I, I play nice. it every day, and it's no problem for me. Exactly. So I think you have to find what works for you. Right. I also know that diet. Also, you shouldn't eat. A heavy meal right before going to bed. I drink a whole bunch of you know caffeine, you know, before going to bed. So some things you learn from you know experience, right, right, uh, yeah. But, but you do you do you do need a restful sleep. If, if you if you are having a if you're not sleeping properly or not getting enough sleep, then you have to ask yourself, you know, do I have too many thoughts going on in my head? Mm -hmm. Do I am I eating? You know food that uh, requiring that my, you know, my body try to break this down as opposed to being relaxed enough for me to fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So I think some of those things just come with experience, you know, and wisdom, but you, yeah. you have to, you have to be uh, in tune and you have to be present. You can't live in the future. Mm -hmm. You can't live in the past. 
and and you also have to let things go. Mm-hmm. You know, I remember there was a time I got burglarized a few times. And to my surprise, I said to myself, they got me good, but God got me better. Mm-hmm. And and so emotionally, I was able to let it go. And I just moved on, you know, to, to bigger things. So, yeah, um, not, not, you know, spending more of your time and energy thinking about this yeah. terrible experience. I think, you know, and giving Plus you power. can't you can't take, you know, material things with you. So mm-hmm. it helps to minimize things and not be a hoarder and not be, you know, or whatever, you know, try to find things that bring you uh, intrinsic, uh, mm-hmm. you know, peace of mind. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, thank you so much. I really enjoyed this. I can't believe, you know, it's already 8 p.m. The time flew by. <laughs> um, so I will be posting. I, I, You know what? I just realized I didn't even mention who I was. Everyone's like, who is this random lady talking to Mr. Keith Clark? I am Hannah. I am the AmeriCorps VISTA Training and Partnerships Coordinator at MCCJ, which is why we're on the MCCJ Instagram account. So, yes. And then this is Mr. Keith Clark, the Managing Director at the Miami Jazz and Film Society. So I will be posting um, this to Facebook um, so that people can rewatch it um, if they want. Um, so, yeah, I just want to thank you so much once again for taking your time. I know that, you know, everyone has a busy schedule, so I really appreciate, I know, like, especially in the evening hours, they're precious hours. So thank you so much for, for joining me this evening. And um, for this for this ten days of connection, can we talk experience? And um, yeah, wishing you all the best. Um, I myself am about to go tune into the playoffs game with the Miami Heat and the Seventy Sixers. So go Heat! <laughs> That's my plan. That's my mental health um, treat for myself tonight. So anyway, um, I, I'm wishing you a, a great night, and and we'll speak soon. Wonderful. Thank you for the opportunity. And thank you, for, folks, for listening. Thank you so much. Okay. Thanks, Anne. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye.